What is up, nerds? Paul here at Radio Free Hammer Hall, bringing you another comprehensive guide. Today, we are talking about retreating, a topic that I've wanted to talk about for quite a while, just haven't gotten to. I've been teasing it forever. And here we are today. We're going to talk about running away from the fight. So this is a rule that I notice a lot of newer players and uh, you know less experienced players, players that play less often, they just don't do this. Um, or they, uh, they forget the rule exists altogether. Um, players that have played, you know, from many editions of Warhammer past where there was no retreating kind of have like this anchoring bias, I think to not retreat because previously you weren't able to. So you, once you get in combat, you're just stuck there. I've noticed that a lot of players on the top tables at tournaments, they definitely use retreats frequently, particularly using retreats, um, with units with special retreat oriented abilities. And I'm going to talk about more of what you do with retreating and all like why it's a good idea to do this. The other thing to do here too is kind of the opposite side of my first point is that if your opponent isn't thinking about retreating for themselves, they're probably not thinking about you retreating either. So you can frequently catch people with their pants down because they're just not seeing it coming. They're going to leave themselves open to a retreat in a key place where you might be able to jump out of combat and onto objectives. Um, and really, it, this can decide games. It frequently does. It at the last GT I played at, like a strategic retreat made by my opponent was this deciding factor of the game. Uh, it was a really close, good game. And, you know, he pulled off a retreat move onto an objective that I had abandoned. Um, I was trying to kill off the unit. I didn't kill it all off. And he just ran away onto the objective, burned it down, and that was it. So let's go over the basics real quick of retreating. So this is a move you make in your movement phase with a unit that's within three inches of an enemy unit. So you make a normal move, which can include a run. And typically you're going to want to run along with your retreat move to get more distance. And it, your retreat is going to cause all of the same restrictions as a run most of the time. So it's really no cost to you to do the run as well. So the unit has to end its move more than three inches away from any enemy models. So you can't jump from combat to combat. And you've just got to jump out of combat into a safe area more than three inches away. If a unit can fly, it still can benefit from the fly rule during retreat. So you can fly over enemy models. You can fly over uh, friendly models, endless spells, terrain, whatever you need to. And that run can still be modified by spending a command point to change that run roll to a six. Other thing to note here that I forgot on my slide is that if you retreat, you can't uh, charge and you can't shoot that turn with that unit unless they have a special rule that says otherwise. So some examples of some special rules that orient around retreating. Uh, skinks, as well as your Skaven heroes, they can, during the combat phase, make a retreat move. When they're chosen to activate for combat, they can retreat rather than making attacks. Your Skaven units in general, they can retreat and still charge that turn. Uh, your Free Guild Outriders, those can retreat and or shoot. Uh, in, uh, I'm sorry, retreat and or run and then shoot still in uh, 
that same turn. And interesting new mechanic that has been introduced. Uh, well, I'm not sure it's really new. This has probably been something that's in there before. But the unmade warband out of Slaves to Darkness, they can prevent enemy units from retreating, which is super powerful. Um, I like that a lot. It's a very fragile unit, but you can really uh, hamper somebody's game plan by, you know, preventing them from, like, a bump and run off of you. So the basic retreat move, I would say, is really, like, retreating for survival. So you get into a combat... It turns unfavorable, or if it was unfavorable to begin with because you got charged, you know, it might not be worth it to stay in that combat. You may be a, a more benefit to back out of the combat and preserve your units for longer. You know, if you're going to get your unit destroyed in that next combat phase, then it doesn't really... it has no value to you because your opponents are just going to be able to charge something else on the next turn or shoot something else or whatever they're going to do. But if you move them to, you know, that minimum three inches away and position your models in such a way that it blocks off the enemy units from going where they might want to go, it still sort of has the effect of them being in combat, but they're not in combat. So they would have to charge you again to get rid of that unit. So it's an extra turn that you get where your opponent is bogged down in that unit that you retreated. So that's really useful for things like chaff units and things like that. You want to let your opponent charge them, back out of combat, let your opponent charge them again, back them out of combat, and keep doing that till they're dead, basically. This is another good tactic, too, when you're in a, a bad position as far as combat, but a good board position, you can jump out of the combat and onto an objective when your opponent might not be expecting that to happen. The only cautionary tale I would give you guys is that this strategy will reactivate any charge bonuses that your opponent's units have. So sometimes it's not necessarily going to do what you want to do because you're, if your opponent has, say like demigriffs, they get their charge bonuses back on the next turn and they're going to blow your unit off the board. Or, you know, anything with impact hits, anything like that. Then you're screwed. But in the meantime, against most units that don't have some sort of bonus for charging, you're just getting yourself out of combat for at least one turn. Possibly two turns if, like, you get a double turn against your opponent. So, very powerful there indeed. So, I'm going to talk more now about the specific sorts of things that you can do when you're retreating. This is a concept that I was just talking about a second ago where you're retreating a screening unit. So, you just got to move three inches away, three inches away, three inches away. Just keep like slightly moving that unit back like playing like a little bit of like cat and mouse with your opponent. Like don't let that unit where it wants to be. Just keep blocking it off, forcing them to try and charge you, force them to try and kill you. Hopefully that will be successful. You can hopefully last a couple of battle rounds doing that with a unit if it's got enough defense and really tie up an enemy unit. And frequently it can be like a pretty big points discrepancy. You can tie up like a big heavy unit if you position things correctly, where you are minimizing your frontage against the enemy unit. So when they attack back, they don't have uh, a lot of models that they can get into combat with you. Because your idea here is not to be offensive. Like you're not trying to kill the enemy unit. You're trying to keep it busy. So, retreating on to the objective, this is, you know, a very straightforward one. You know, you have an objective that's near where your combat is, and you just bounce out of that combat and onto the objective and score your points. So, flying units are 
really, really powerful when they retreat because they can go up and over your enemy unit. So it makes your opponent's screens less effective. They can get into combat with you and try to chaff you up, but on your next turn, you can just pull a retreat move, command point that retreat move to a six run, and you know flying units are often faster anyway, so they're just going to leap right over those intervening enemy units, and if there's nothing on the other side stopping you from landing, you've got a nice big move, and you're probably getting right into the things that they're trying to protect, whether it's an objective, key heroes, key other support pieces that are being left undefended in the backfield. You can really start wreaking havoc back there. Now, this one I call, like, the bump and run. Basically, what you do is you actually, instead of... Uh, being on the defense, taking a charge from your opponent, you use your charge move as a slingshot into a retreat in the next turn. So you move forward, you use the charge to basically get extra movement distance. You try and hit the corner of the enemy unit so that they, with the pile-in, they don't get that many models into combat, so you have uh, more staying power with your unit. They don't all get stuck in combat and get a lot of damage and then on your next turn or if you're using something like skinks you can on your next unit activation you can just jump out of that combat and head over to a more important objective or more advantageous point on the battlefield maybe go from being in an aggressive position to be in a screening position to try and protect something else Now here's the important thing to think about when you're on the other side is to really look at what your opponent's lines of retreat are and make sure that you are blocking them out so that they can't pull these shenanigans on you. Like if you're playing against a an army with a lot of flying units, you, you have to remember that your chaff isn't really chaff because they can just jump over you. So if you're going to chaff them up, then you need another line of something behind them that kind of prevents them getting to land anywhere. So having another unit about six inches behind, well, it could be a little bit more than six inches behind your front screen, that can prevent them from moving altogether, at least advancing towards you, because now you've created like this nine inch bubble. So they've got a clear nine inches of board space plus their base to get on the other side of you. And so you're going to look at like 13 inches of movement or something like that. They're probably going to have to spend a command point to get the movement over that. It's just, it's a big hill to climb sometimes, although flying units do tend to have high movement. But there are some slower ones out there that only have like movement eight. So you're potentially in trouble. So, some final thoughts here as I retreat out of the video. This concept can really make or break games. And it's really important to get it down. Always remember that it's an option to you. And it's an option to your opponent as well. So you have to always pay attention to where your opponent's units are in relation to things. And try and not just deal with your unit as it currently is. But block off their lines of retreat towards things that you don't want them to get into. So what I would always ask myself, every movement phase, for every unit that I have in combat, is it worth staying in this combat? Do I gain more or lose less by retreating out somewhere else? Does it get you a better position by retreating? Does it save you models? Does it... Uh, you know, draw your opponent away from something else that you don't want them to be dealing with. Sometimes it can be really enticing when you retreat out just a little bit for your opponent to charge back in reflexively when their better option might be to go somewhere else. So you can play a little bit of psychology with them as well here. 
So that's about it right now that I have on retreating, guys. If you have any other thoughts, please leave them in the comments below. As always, like and subscribe for more videos. I try and get these out as many times as I can, as frequently as possible. Um, unfortunately, I can't really promise any regularity to uh, what I'm doing, but I uh, get out as much as I can. If you like what you see and you want to help support the channel to make us better, uh, you know, please consider subscribing to our Patreon. 100% of the proceeds go back into the channel to improve the quality of things for all of you. So, with that, thank you very much, everybody, and I'll be signing off.